Hey, how's it going? It's Craig. I'm out in the garage and today we're going to talk about a bit of progress I've made on the pinball build. Let's take a look. Okay, so a quick update on the pinball build. I'm conscious that I've kicked off this project and not really updated too much since uh, kicking it off, but that's a good thing because there's been lots going on behind the scenes. First thing to talk about, and we'll talk about it in this video, is Pinfest. Went to Pinfest a couple of weeks ago with my wife. We went up on a Saturday afternoon or Saturday morning. We left. It's about a three hour drive each way, so it was a six hour total drive. Um, but it was worth it. We spent probably three hours in there. So three hours there, three hours in the event, and then three hours back. But I absolutely loved it. And next year, I think I'll go and do a lot more time at Pinfest, spend a lot more time there. Three hours is enough. You can get around a lot of things in there, but things are busy in there and it's a busy event so there was a lot of people playing the games that I wanted to get onto so a lot of things I didn't get onto that I wanted to but I managed to get a lot of info from Pinfest around what I do like in pinball machines and what I don't like in pinball machines so we'll talk about those in a little bit because I think what I'll do is I'll show you a little bit of footage and I'll show you some of the things I do and do not like um, around different pinball machines so yeah it's, it's pretty cool to go to an event like that just, you see so many pinball machines in one place that you never see in the in the wild i suppose it was just really cool to see so many people passionate about pinball machines and everything else so yeah that was cool we'll talk about that in a bit i picked up some parts i got um a bunch of parts off a of seller on uh, pinball info um i've also picked up a empty cabinet and a populated playfield uh on an older playfield off of another member on pinball info i'll talk about those in a different video because there's so many parts that i picked up I've not tested anything, they're, they're used parts, they're going to need cleaning, they're going to need restoring and some of them are just going to be junk but other parts are going to be useful so we'll go through that in a separate video but I just wanted to start getting some parts in so at some point I can get something onto a piece of wood and start getting things moving so that's really cool. Um, PCBs and hardware and things like that I've also started looking into and I've sent off some PCB designs to China so we'll do a separate video on that um, I'll show you just a quick uh, 3D overview of what we're doing just a teaser but that's going to come in another video and then I'm getting those boards sent to me from China and yeah they'll be really cool because I'll be able to populate those boards I've got to buy all the components for them we're going to do a build video on that just to get it all up and running I've not found much information out there on YouTube about this project but um, hopefully we'll be able to document it and help people in the future as well if they want to go this route. There are different routes around the hardware so we'll talk about them in that video as well. So yeah, so lots of things going on in the background. So let's quickly talk about Pinfest. I think that is the one thing over the last couple of weeks that has really given me a bit of direction. It's taught me what I like in a pinball machine and what I don't like in a pinball machine. Um, it was just really cool to see all those pinball machines everywhere. It was a real community there. I didn't get really involved. I didn't have a pint. Well, I had a pint with me and Kerry but we didn't have a pint with anyone else. I didn't really introduce my Myself to people um, I kept a little bit under the radar to be totally honest because it was my first time going to this event still pretty new in the pinball scene so I'm not on the forums as much as a lot of other people but I thought I'd just go take a look at the event and I definitely want to go next year for maybe the whole weekend and see how we how we go up there and see if I can spend a little bit more time on the pinball machines never know I might even have something that is barely <laughs> it resembles a machine that I could take along as my homebrew build at the time so let's talk about some of the things we learned there I'll show you some footage first it is filmed on my phone so apologies the I forgot to take a camera with me so I filmed it on my phone and some of the, the LED lights now blur out some of the play fields which is a bit of a pain um, but there's enough good footage in there just to show you the scale of the pin fest and what it looked like cool
Okay, so that was really cool. Uh, just some quick footage of Pinfest, just to show you the, the scale and everything of it. I'm going to Blackpool Game Expo in a couple of weeks' time as well, and I'm going to be filming up there, and I know there's going to be 10, 15 machines there, so I'll do some footage at uh, Play Expo in Blackpool as well in a couple of weeks' time. Um, but yeah, I learned a lot from this trip, so I've got a couple of notes on my phone. So one thing I, I realised is I like an electronic plunger, so <laughs> I don't want a manual plunger. I feel that yes it's traditional and it's it's a really nice feel so you can do a soft plunge or a hard plunge to do different um skill shots and things like that but i like the pace and the energy of a, an electronic plunger this i'll show you some shots and my getaway has got an electronic plunger and it's got the gear shifter on there as the plunger i quite like that novelty element some of them are just buttons that's uh revenge from attack from mars it's just a button to launch and yeah, we can go down either route. I suppose I could run with a button first of all, but maybe, depending on the theme when we get into that, whether there's something that we can do for an electronic plunger that makes it a little bit more. There was one with a gun handle on there, I can't remember whether it was Goldeneye or something else, I can't remember what one that was. I'll show you footage over the top now. So on an electronic plunger on the system is a default, I don't want to go with a manual one, so I quite like the idea of the electronic plunger where it can, similar to my um, getaway, where it can do auto launch of the, the multi-ball and things like that. I quite like that feature, so I want to go with that in the future um, as part of my build. Um, the pace, the pace of a machine is really important to me, so the pace and the flow and everything else, I know there's different designers of different pinball machines that people talk about. Um, my machine is a Steve Ritchie machine, it's known as a bit of a fan layout where there's lots of loops and things like that, and it's very typical for a Steve Ritchie layout. absolutely love the way that my getaway runs, it's very smooth and fast, it's a nice flowing machine, I quite like that, um, but I do want some difficult, more uh, tricky shots in there as well so I don't want everything just to be left and right flipper I want something to come off of a different angle um, different ramps and different uh, targets to, to be hit um, playing things like revenge from attack from Mars where you've got to use the ramp to hit the the, the back uh, targets and things like that I really like those kinds of things as well so we'll have a look at whether something like that is possible in this build as well I don't want to go too far and make it too busy in there but if I can get it enough that there's a bit of variety and a bit of a challenge as well. I want it to be challenging for the better players. I want it probably to be too hard for me. I, I'm not a great player of pinball, but I want this machine to be something that somebody wants to play. So if you're a competitive player, you want to be able to play this because you want to be able to do that shot. Or you want to be able to do that level mode or whatever else it is on there. So I want this machine to be competitive enough that people want to play it. So... Things like uh, Total Nuclear Annihilation, that looked like it was a competitive type of game. It had enough shots with that ball lock and things like that in there that I think is a really interesting way of taking a game forward and making it uh, a little bit more progressive for people that want to play serious pinball. Next thing I want to talk about is up kickers and ramps and those kinds of things. Um, I love the movement of up kickers, ramps, wire forms. Uh, this, for those that don't know, this is an up kicker. So basically, the ball will come into some kind of trough or hole, and then this will kick the ball up and literally fly the ball in the air. That can either go onto a wire form, so with the metal wires that wire forms that take the ball to another part of the playfield, or it can go to just another level that can go up to an, another play field or something else so i do like the idea of having an up kicker in there so i bought one of those this is a second hand up kicker so we're going to have a look at using one of these at least one of these we'll have a look at whether we want to build in multiple we'll have a look at the the ideas around that as well i like some ideas around uh ramps and i don't want too many ramps in there i think too many ramps is going to spoil the the play field and spoil the, the the movement of it but i do want some kind of ramps White Water I played at Pinfest, I didn't get any footage of it, but that's got a ramp on the left hand side that you go up and then it's like almost like a roller coaster type ramp on the left hand side, that's pretty cool. Um, I think that even comes into, is it on the bottom right hand side where there's like a, almost like a whirlpool ramp as well, so it goes up a ramp, comes down and then the ball rolls around and then falls out onto the play field. Those kinds of things I think are really cool and interesting, but they've got to have a purpose for me. I don't want to just build loads of ramps and things in there just for the sake of it. So we're going to have a look at those step by step of what we want to include. The next thing I noticed at Pinfest I really like the idea of, and it's been used in pinball for years, is a magnet. And magnets have been used in games such as like Dracula, where they move the ball across the play field. Um, but also in newer games where it picks up the balls, or even in the case of Super Hoop, which I played at the Pinfest, was a really cool game. Um, that uses the ball to hold it, and then you can shoot for the basket in a basketball type setup. Really cool game. Um, I can't remember the producer's names of that, but I'll put it over the top of the screen now. It was a really nice uh, new build, and I think it's fairly low cost on the, to buy as a, a, a brand new cabinet, which is pretty cool. Um, but that would, 
give me a little bit of inspiration around how you could do ball capture and things like that with magnets. So I want to bring in some kind of magnet element into my game. I don't know how they work, how we and what you do with them to make them work on the play field. So we're going to have to research that and have a look into it in the future. But I think a magnet element will be pretty cool to do some kind of multi-ball or some kind of lock. So we're going to have a look at buying the parts and keeping that in mind ready for the future build as well. Because that's one thing I really want to include is some kind of magnet element in there. Next up was... Light colour, not too dark on the playfield. So there were some amazing games there. They absolutely look lovely with the LED lights and everything in them. But I think if a game in the playfield is too dark, it makes it feel almost enclosed a little bit. And I like my games to be a little bit more brighter, lighter, open. So I think when they get down to the theme in the artwork and everything, I'm going to have to make sure that I keep it fairly bright. And I think that's my, my aim when I'm getting into Photoshop and designing things right way into the project. It's going to be a while yet, but... That's one of the things I want to do is make sure I keep it fairly light. Um, it's fairly colourful. Uh, I don't want it too colourful. I don't want it looking like a neon disco. It's got to look something that I'm really comfortable with playing. I think nice natural tones, uh, greys, whites, reds. Uh, depending on what the theme is, we'll, we'll get into that a little bit later on. But the colour of it, I think if a play field and the surroundings are too dark, the LEDs glow even more and it just... It can look really cool, but at the same time, for me personally, I think the lighter looking play fields is where I really enjoy um, playing the game and seeing where the ball is and what is going on. I don't want anything to be hidden and dark. Um, that's another thing I learned at Pinfest was second level play fields, so upper play fields. Some of them have got play fields that cover maybe 50% of the play field. And to me, the ball is lost for a lot of the time. If you hit the ball up there and there's pop bumpers underneath there and things, the ball is getting bounced around underneath that second play field and it's a little bit lost of purpose for me because you're just waiting for it to come down you're not doing anything you're waiting for the ball your points are racking up but you don't really know what's going on and that kind of feel was not what i wanted to go for i don't mind the second level play field but i want to keep it fairly simple um but we'll have a look at that when we get into the design of the game later on but yeah the second play fields i don't want it to cover too much of the play field either i want everything to be visible as much as possible so that was another thing i learned at pinfest a couple of other things i noticed i didn't like at pinfest was a non-standard lower third so the italian bottom i think it's called everyone likes an italian bottom um that is where you've got the slings the uh, in lanes and out lanes and the flippers in the standard position i think that is kind of standard for pinball i want to make sure i'm sticking to that there was one game i think it was called goldwing which is a like a top gun ripoff if you look at it i'll show the video over the top of the here now it's it's definitely a top gun ripoff but that had three flippers on the bottom and it was just confusing what was going on. I didn't really know why that one on the third was there. Um, I'm sure it makes sense when you play it a little bit more. But to me, I just want to know that I can get onto a game and I know that those two flippers down the bottom are the most core. Then I've got other flippers or other movement items further up that I can control if I need to. The other thing I like is uh, just standard two buttons on the side. I, I know some games have got like multiple buttons and things like that. It's too complex. I just want to keep... The standard gameplay of a pinball machine is a pinball machine. I don't want to be able to have to do second buttons for second flippers and things like that. I want those two buttons to control the main two flippers first of all and then any other mechanisms that are needed throughout the game for other ramps and other shots and things. I like that kind of simplicity of basic pinball etiquette that should be, I think, is part of most games anyway. But I think let's keep with that and keep it fairly standard. I know there's some items we can do. People have done some nice creative things with pop bumpers lower down and things like that rather than slings. We can look at that and I think cause that's an option as well. But I think there's keeping those slippers in the, in the standard position is one thing that's really important to me. And I want to keep that kind of pinball etiquette going in my build as I, as I progress with this as well. So let's keep with that. Um, the other thing I want to say is a, a massive shout out to the pinball amigos who were there and I didn't meet them but they're two machines they had there they had the minions one and the uh, crazy mansion I think it's called they looked amazing I didn't play them they weren't I don't think they were operational when I was there I think the guys were away from them at the time and I think they either chose to disable them I don't think somebody broke them I think they chose to disable them to take the balls out or something um, but you couldn't play them at the time, but I think people were playing them throughout the, the, the pin fest. Um, they look really cool. So Crazy Mansion, I think it's called, um, looks, it's a display piece in itself. It's absolutely stunning. Uh, the movements and everything else on there, the projection onto the glass and things like that as well. Or oh, was it lower playfield glass? I can't remember what the, the setup they've got, but have a look at their project. I'll put a link to the channel below um, in the description just so you can have a look at their, their builds because they are taking homebrew to the next level. Um, I think they come from the Netherlands as well and you've travelled all the way over to 
uh, to the UK for for the Pinfest, which was really cool. The other homebrew there to mention was Phil Dixon's is Phil Dixon's is Phil Dixon's uh, Forbidden Planet. Absolutely amazing setup. He did a really good, great job on that, and I know he's still working on it. Um, while I was there, I was chatting to Phil. Um, really nice guy. Gave me a couple of bits of advice, and yeah, he had the playfield up, and he was showing me different things in there. Things have progressed since he started that project. He started that quite a while ago, and I think he was suggesting that he'd take a slightly different route now if he was to do it again. Um, but I know Phil's worked on a lot of different projects over the past and with some pinball producers and manufacturers and things as well. So really knowledgeable guy and really nice to chat with him. Um, one of the things that somebody has said on the forum is not to run before a walk and to consider going a retheme route um, and it was a really nice Aladdin retheme there as well um, somebody did an absolutely stunning job of retheming this cabinet um, they rethemed this game I can't I think it was Arabian Nights originally I'm not sure but they've rethemed it put Aladdin the the Will Smith movie not my personal choice but obviously it means something to them they've rethemed it and they put in models and they've done the the graphics and everything else and it looked really cool it looked like a pro machine it didn't look like a something that somebody's done in their house um, I understand the, the concept of doing a, a retheme rather than a build from scratch, but to me, if I'm going to do a retheme, I'm going to have to buy a machine, and I'm limited to the ramps and everything else that is there. I want something that I can really build and make my own. Um, I'm not scared of doing the hardware, I'm not scared of doing the software or the graphic design. I'm going to get into everything. It's going to take me a while, and maybe there will be points along the journey where I'll be thinking, why didn't I just do a retheme and get on with it? Um, I could have rethemed my getaway. It probably would have been a little bit of sacrilege, but um, I could have rethemed that, put a, a Mission Printball setup in there and got a big screen on there and made it like a, a 2.0 version. But I want to get into everything myself. I really want to get into the detail. I'm quite stubborn and I'm quite ambitious when I get into these things. And hopefully you can join me on this journey because I will get there eventually. And I don't think it's going to take me multiple years i think it's 12 months is my target to get something really playable and i hope i can get there in 12 months time uh just to something that's playable and looks pretty cool but i do really appreciate the advice off the forums because yeah you guys have been doing this for a lot longer than i know um <laughs> i have and i i really don't know the detail of what i'm getting into in some instances but i've researched and researched everything um the woodwork side of things is not going to scare me um i found a maker hack place in cardiff which is about 10 miles away from me it's got a cnc machine that i can use it's got um loads of equipment there as well so woodworking equipment laser cutters and everything else so that's really positive to me i think i've got now a my garage where i can do a lot of the work i've got i can program remotely on my laptop or my pc behind me so i can do the vision pinball stuff there and i've got a separate place now where i can hopefully get involved in the community there and get some support on getting the cnc and everything else done so yeah I think that 12 months is really ambitious, but I think I can get it to a working play field in 12 months time. Probably 11 months time if I'm gonna try and get it to, uh, to Pinfest next year, but let's see how it goes, uh, see what the progress is, and maybe it's gonna take me 12 months plus, but I, I'm really keen to get on with it and see where we can get to next. And one final thing I learned from Pinfest is don't go too far with the gimmicks. Um, there's there's some games there that have just got too much moving on there, too much going on. Um, there was one really cool game, but I wouldn't want it in my collection, called Orbiter 1. Really lovely game, and I'm guessing it's fairly unique because the playfield is almost like a bowl, and it, the ball just moves around and floats everywhere. It was really fun to play, and me and Kerry played on it for quite a bit, but I don't think it was a game that I would want in my collection. Um, it's probably really expensive and really rare, really nice piece of kit, but and we played it a lot and had some fun with it, but I think long term it wouldn't be the game for me, but that was just another example of something that looked really cool, but I think sometimes if you go too far with the play field or too far with the mechanisms in there, it can get a little bit too far and take it away from the enjoyment. I want this to be a fun game that anyone can play, whether you're just literally double flipping and first time you ever play the pinball machine or whether you're a competitive player i want it to play equally as fun something a bit like uh, deadpool godzilla jurassic park those kinds of new eras i know i'm aiming high at this but i want it to feel like those new era games where somebody that goes into a pub and there's a pinball machine there that hasn't played one for years could stick a pound in and have a go on it or if you're really good at pinball you can get into the detailed gameplay and get into the 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 real level by level progress and things that you do on those games i want something like that as my end goal i know that's really ambitious and probably way out of my league at the moment but that's my aspiration if you haven't got aspirations and goals for it then what's the point in doing it in the first place so those are a couple of things i've learned from pinfest as i said i've got hardware kits things that i've bought i need to do videos on separately dogs barking 
Leave it! <laughs> um, I've got PCBs and things on the way, so I'll do a separate video on that. And then, yeah, let's keep this progress going because I'm really conscious that I have got a big amount of work ahead of me. I've got things that I need to do in here. I'm going to restructure this garage. There's a bit of a mess in here at the moment, as always. So I'm going to move my pinball machine and two of my driving arcade games down to the bottom end of the garage and probably some of my jammer arcades up further. I'm going to try and move things around. My daughter, as you probably may have seen in my previous video, I did a gift for my daughter moving to university. My daughter's moved out to university, so I'm going to move my office from in here up to the bedroom just so I've got a little bit more space for doing things on my desk in the garage. And yeah, I can get on with building things and hopefully make some progress over the next couple of weeks. Okay, so lots of things to update on going forward. Play Expo is coming up, as I said. I've got all that hardware to talk about that I bought, so the cabinet and everything else. And I've got the PCBs that I'm working on as well with that supplier from China. So there will be videos over the next couple of weeks on all of those. Um, if you're not subscribed already, please subscribe down below because it helps the channel uh, get a little bit more coverage of the work that I'm doing. Uh, please share it on any forums. I'll be updating the different forums that I'm on. So Pinball Info, Pinside, you UK VAC and Goodwin's Place uh, .co.uk website so if you're on any of those take a look at them you'll see the project builds and everything going on um, not too much progress as yet but it will be over the next couple of weeks so keep watching and I'll see you soon